Welcome to Great Talk and Entertainment. I'm your host, KJ, and this is the podcast where we review movies and TV shows from all your favorite superheroes, including Marvel Comics and DC Comics and much more. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Great Talk and Entertainment official channel, baby. Let's go. As we continue on on the new Disney Plus show, by Marvel Studios, Ms. Marvel. This is an episode four review, and of course, it is a spoiler. So, if you have not seen this show, pause this. Definitely give you a thumbs up so my channel can grow. Go watch it, come back, listen to my review, and let me know what you guys think about all the Marvel shows and movies, including this show right here. Tell me, guys, what you think and what's your guys' theory. So, let's get into it. So, in episode four. It takes us around the world, basically, to Pakistan and introducing us to a different lifestyle that they live over there with a little bit of action, but mostly stays on the uh, mother, daughter, slash granddaughter, grandma uh, relationship between the three women. And, and also introducing us to new characters and a new group called the Red Daggers who are inspired by Ms. Marvel's uh, grandmother, who's also is somehow, I don't know, like connected to all this, but she's her grandma, Kamala's grandmother's mother, so it'd be a great great grandma, inspired the Red Daggers, and they look up to her, and they are inspired by her, basically. So, uh, and this is also explaining how other dimensions like the Norn exist just like her world does and exists existed at the same time. And it looks like from that how he uh, the leader of the Red Dagger explained that they co it, this dimension is shaped like the Earth, like our world or her world, the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So again, we don't know who actually lives there. There's a lot of Marvel characters that exist in that world, and there's so much of them. Even, I would say, uh, there's mutants, that X-Men character mutants, that exist in this uh, in the other dimension, which I believe is so heavily connected to the Wakanda, a.k.a. Black Panther, to the Moon Knight show, and the uh, Soul Stone dimension. So I definitely, they like I said from the last review, this definitely is something big going to happen here. And this could be in the Phase 5 or the Phase 6 uh, Marvel series. Who knows? But this this is an eye-opening. This is a game-changer for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So I definitely really like this episode a lot. So uh, let's talk about Nani, which is uh, Ms. Marvel's uh, grandma. This is where in this lot of episodes she talks about how nobody in her family believes her stories. Not just her family. Nobody really believes her quote-unquote conspiracy theories. And we learn in this episode that uh, Kamala's uh, mother, uh, which would be the daughter of Nani, uh, expresses how she feels about her stories and how she feels like this neglecting her childhood and it kind of ruined their mother-daughter relationship at, when she was a child. And we just this just shows how much Kamala's mother um, took this negativity and inspired her to be, you know, a better mother, a better parent to Ms. Marvel and want to raise her right. And this explains why she so heavily want to be in uh, Ms. Marvel's, well, her daughter's business and want to be there and supportive and explains why she's so hard on her and strict because this is a life that she didn't get with her mother and like I said this is a very mother daughter slash grandmother type uh, story format so uh, this is definitely for the ladies <laughs> so but it, it explains a lot and then when after uh, Kamala comes home 
to her grandma's house and she starts bonding with her mom and they just have that moment because I think these three ladies do have a strong love for each other and obviously they have a strong bond and Kamala's learning that her family has all the answers to the secrets and problems that she's trying to solve and they have the keys to it basically and I think that's what she's learning and I think that's just really cool and another thing I like to point out this show from episode 3 and, and this one episode 4 it just shows how much the Avengers impact the whole world globally like when if you notice like there's like a spray paint of Ant-Man to Captain Marvel, Iron Man, and, and so much. Like, the Avengers are heavily influenced the world on a better impact. And like I said, this is the phase of, like, everybody and their own stories moving on from what Thanos did, the snap, the blimp, whatever you want to call it. And obviously, I really like about the show is just they gave us a new uh, background you know, we're not in New York or New Jersey or whatever. We're in a we're in, we're in a different place globally, and better a fun way to watch an action pack like chase scene, but not in our typical vehicles, but in in vehicles of course. So definitely love that. Uh, let's talk about the red daggers. So the red daggers, like I said, they are very they're like descendants inspired by. Uh, Ms. Marvel's great grandmother, who's the who's the first one in her family to hold the bangle, and it just shows that this group here is obviously against the Jins, and they're trying to protect it. And but automatically they sacrifice everything to protect Kamala and uh, Chemo. He is, uh, there's another love triangle, so now there's three men, or boys, whatever, three guys, we'll just keep it simple, three guys who have a crush on uh, Ms. Marvel, and she has yet realizes it, because, yeah, but obviously she has a lot on her plate, she's trying to be a superhero, she's trying to figure out this bangle. She's trying to understand her family history. So yes, she is going to get distracted from the obvious things like that. But I, to me, I feel like these are characters who are going to be more placed in other movies and shows. They could. They could. Like, like in comic books, the Red Dagger are a huge uh, group or gang, whatever who are very influenced heavily in a lot of Marvel comic comic books obviously and I I, I I see them staying a little bit longer I mean I think if you just read their comic books there's plenty of stories that Marvel Studios could use so I definitely think that this group and Kimo he's going to be very he could be placed in other Marvel shows or films so I would hope they would go with that but with him, he does at some point in comic books he does get the he does get some superpowers from the Creed. Uh, he does have abilities too, and you know sh they do. Uh, there's a lot of comic books where they team up a lot. Him and uh, Ms. Mar uh, Ms. Ms. Marvel team up a lot and do team ups Avengers. So you know there's another character they could add in the Young Avengers if possible who knows so there's there's a ton of things that they could do so don't sleep on that <laughs> uh Kamala discovering more of her abilities this is um they were kind of teasing the idea of her be able to make her body taller longer stronger bulkier but obviously they're doing this with the uh bangle for obviously like I said in the episode one review where I said this is why they're they're going this route not to confuse uh casual movie Marvel fans or whatever to think that she has the same ability as Mr. Fantastic. But they keep it 
where you can kind of see the shades and similarities to it so they're balancing it out and i think like i said i have no problem with that because you know it, they still she's still learning the her abilities that if you read any ms marvel comic books obviously she's gonna have her abilities and body styles just like the comic books and they're definitely gonna imply it in the live action so so let's all calm down on that so i'm cool with that uh with the ending explaining now like I said, there's really not a lot going on in this episode, but they did explain a lot. This is like a, like I said, it was a, a bonding time episode. But as we see at the end, when the whole gang of Jins came at her, and now they're in, now Kamala is either she went back in time, and how does she did it? Something with that bangle, so. I guess there's a time traveling thing so this is definitely going to be next episode is definitely going to be heavily connected to Avengers Endgame and everything that maybe the Ant-Man and Tony Stark Iron Man and others explain about time traveling and the quantum realm is definitely going to be involved with this I believe so it's uh, definitely exciting so but other than that, this episode was really great. It, it introduced us to new characters like the Red Daggers. And, you know, funny if you believe it, this day, a lot of their father styles they learned from, you know, from a lot of characters from the Daredevil series, like uh, Iron Fist. Like, they learned from him. So, there, there's your Daredevil connection there, too. So, there's a lot going on here, but... If I had to give this episode, I'm definitely giving this episode 1 out of 10. I'm definitely giving it 10. It was a great episode. Uh, I really just like how they're taking each Marvel character globally and introduce, showing the world what a, a Marvel character would do in a live action in different countries and stuff. So I'm definitely really enjoying this. Uh, I think Ms. Uh, Marvel's such a great character so far, and she's definitely going to be a fan favorite in today's pop culture. So, definitely like it. So, that's my review. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Great Talk and Entertainment Official Channel. Please subscribe, hit that notification button so you can always be up to date with all my latest.